From the inner sense of time Comes the ancient poet's rhyme Bringing us the master key To open up the mystery From the depth of time and space We arrive in quiet grace Finding what is meant to be As we explore the mystery Pouring forth from days gone by We can hear the poet sigh From the depth of ecstasy Moving into mystery Hello and welcome again to Creative Connections. And today my guest is tattoo artist Phil Oliveira. Phil, welcome. Thank you, Gary. So uh, you've been, uh, you're with Needle Therapy Tattoo and Body Piercing. Correct. And how long have you guys been in business? Uh, we're coming up on three years. Uh, this early August will be three years for us. Okay. Uh, I've been tattooing almost 20 years myself. Okay. All right. So you must have started rather young. Yeah. About 18 is when I started my apprenticeship. <laughs> okay. It was actually still illegal here in Massachusetts to tattoo when I, I began my apprenticeship. Um, so there were, there were some big name artists that uh, helped Massachusetts become legalized for tattooing. Uh, okay. So we owe them everything. That's, that's great. You know, it's, it's funny because I'm, I've been in, in Massachusetts for 13 years, but I, I didn't realize there was a period where it was illegal. Yeah, uh, the turn of the millennium, it became legal. So anybody who got tattooed from 1999 or before, if it was in Massachusetts, it was illegal. Otherwise, you went to Connecticut, New Hampshire, <laughs> Vermont, maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, you know, uh, it did not occur to me as I was doing this show focused on the arts to think of tattooing as an art. But having seen some of your work, having seen, uh, we'll look at some of the slides in a bit, uh, there's definitely an art to it. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's all art. Um, you know, a, tattooing has a stigma around it, which is why you maybe didn't think of it as an art form. Right. Um, it's definitely, it's all it is. It doesn't make you run faster or jump higher or anything like that. <laughs> so it's just, uh, you know, some people like to hang their art on their walls. Um, I like to carry my art everywhere I go. Um, so I don't have to go home to look at that painting. I can look at my chest, my arm, what have you. Okay. We were when when we were talking uh, to arrange your your coming on. Uh, the one question that uh, it was in my mind is we we all see on Facebook and the like these sort of tattoos gone wrong. <laughs> yes. Uh, so how do you make sure that, for instance, you're not misspelling something? Okay. Or well. With lettering tattoos, everybody needs to know, first of all, that tattooists are humans too. We do make mistakes. Um, the consultation phase is where we go through everything and we get spelled. For example, anything with spelling, I have all my clients spell everything. It doesn't even matter what the word is. Uh, and the reason being is because when I sit down to draw your lettering tattoo, I don't look at it like it's a lettering tattoo. I draw each individual letter one by one. Okay. Um, so it's easy to, if the word is misspelled, it's, it's easy to make a mistake. So. Right. If you're getting a lettering tattoo, I highly recommend check the spelling <laughs> <laughs> repeatedly. I, one of the things I like to do, um, because I'm not a great speller, is, is I'll go to Google and talk text. Say the word or the phrase you want. It doesn't make a mistake. It's a computer. So okay, that's what I do. Yeah. And the other thing that struck me when we were talking is that you really have in your mind, a procedure that people should go through when yes. they're thinking of getting a tattoo. What is that? Absolutely. Uh, a lot of people want to call or um, 
hit up the Facebook page, if you will, or an email or email us or something. We really want you to come into the shop. Uh, we would like to see, uh, see, see your lovely face, but we would love to see uh, where you want to put it, how big you're looking to get it. Uh, bring in any examples that you have uh, of work. Just know that we're going to redraw it in, a, in our own style and such. Um, so reference is key. Um, and not calling. Don't price shop. You know these things are on you forever. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times people come into the shop and you know they've got a three hundred dollar pair of sneakers, a five hundred dollar iPhone, but they're complaining about a sixty dollar tattoo. And I understand it could be a lot of money, but. The phone, it's going to go out of style. You're going to get a new one next year, the year after. Same thing with the shoes. Maybe spend a little extra money on the tattoo that's going to be with you forever. <laughs> okay. So how did you get started with art in general? Ooh, I come from a line of artists. I come from a line of tattooers in general. Uh, nobody was famous or anything like that. I'm the right. only one who, uh, from my understanding anyway, I'm the only one in my family who has owned a shop or uh, even worked long term in a tattoo shop. And um, when I got my first tattoo, I was 15 years old, uh, 1995, and uh, <laughs> and um, I was intrigued right out, you know, right right from jump. Um, I didn't really know how to go about becoming a tattoo artist. Um, and then I met somebody who showed me the ropes in a nutshell. He was my mentor and uh, taught me almost everything I know, at least the basics. Okay. So. so when you are working on a design, you draw it out on paper first? I work with digital media. Um, okay. I've been working with uh, or on the iPad uh, through a program called Procreate for almost a year now, just strictly through that. Um, the difference between drawing it on paper and drawing it uh, in, a, in a program, like on an iPad or something like that, or through Procreate, um, I can bring the photograph of the arm into and draw right on top of it okay. uh, so I can get the flow of the body. I, I mean, I could do that by printing a photo, but <laughs> right. it's a little easier to see everything. And, and if you make a mistake while drawing, it's easier to erase. Plus, I get to take my work home with me and I don't have to take, you know, 20 tons of stuff home <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> to draw for people. Okay, so after you've done it on the, uh, on the computer, yep. how do you then get it to the body? Oh, okay. So typically what I do is I print the design and then I have a client, the client come in for a sizing. Uh, if we already have an appointment, I try to get them in before the appointment. Um, we size up the tattoo. I just print it. Okay. Um, I have a, uh, I have two stencil makers at the shop, both of which are really, really expensive. Um, one of them looks just like a printer. So you hit print and it prints and it's a tattoo safe uh, stencil. Uh, the other one is a little older and it uses uh, a carbon paper, but it's a tattoo safe carbon paper. It won't even burn onto regular carbon paper. So okay. um, we t there's a multitude of things you can use as a, as a primer to, to uh, apply the stencil to the skin. Um, what I use is called Electrum. In my opinion, it is the best thing on the market for applying stencils. Um, all your top guys use it and, and they use it for a reason. Um, so. We just kind of rub this cream on, which would be the Electrum in, for me, um, and then we take our stencil, whether it's a printed version or through our 3M copier, uh, which is the older one, right. um, and then we just apply it like a sticker. You know, we apply it, we hold it on for 30 seconds or so, we peel it off and it leaves the carbon behind. Uh, I mean, it, the carbon's with the paper, comes off with the paper too, but the design yeah. is left behind. And we use that like a map. Um, okay. I tell all my uh, apprentices or former apprentices, don't stop drawing. You know, uh, just because you have a blueprint on the skin doesn't mean you have to follow that mm -hmm. exactly. That's more of a suggestion. So right, right. You know, uh, looking at and, and there's a few things we'll look at. Uh, this one is uh, so really wonderful. The the eyes yes. <laughs> yes. on the horse <laughs> uh, just really it. it feels like the horse is looking at you. Awesome. That's that's what I uh, try to go for. Yeah. Uh, I've spent a lot of time working on just eyes. Um, I mean, amongst other things as well, but eyes was a big focus. Um, I, I do a lot of stuff like you see here, and the eyes, nose, mouth, that's your focal point. So yeah. yeah. And everybody looks at the eye. Yeah. And I, I assume Ginger is the name of the horse? Yes. Yes. My client who got this tattoo, um, 
she rescued this horse uh, from what she told me. She rescued this horse from a slaughterhouse, uh, providing my memory is correct here. Um, and she had the horse for many, many, many years. And about a week before, uh, a week after she got this tattoo, she had to put the horse down. Oh. It just got old. So this was her memorial yeah. for Ginger yeah. the horse. Yeah. Yeah, so. that, that's a, a wonderful way of, of remembering and, and to have Ginger with her. Absolutely. Uh, this is a, a different type of horse. Yes, <laughs> yes, the unicorn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what really drew me to this is the splashes of color. It almost looks like spilled ink. Yes. Which, of course, you don't spill tattoo ink. <laughs> Correct. Well, you can, but well, it's not going to look can, like that. It's not going to look like that. <laughs> so how difficult is it to do something like that? I personally think it's fun. You just have to have knowledge of color. Um, I have spent countless hours on color theory, learning color theory. Uh, I am primarily a color artist as well. So anything, as you'll notice, anything that we're looking at is color. Um, the unicorn was brought to me uh, from my client, she wanted to change a couple things around, but it was primarily that was the unicorn, and then she left the splashes up to me, if you will. We call it okay. watercolor in the yeah. tattoo industry, uh, and she left all of the colors and everything up to me as far as the watercolor in the background. Right, and the other thing that that really struck me is all of the gradations of blue and kind of blue green. Yeah, turquoise in yeah. that area up there. Uh, that just really the way it blends in and and shifts is just really amazing thank you thank you uh the colors are so vibrant as well yes now how how long does the color stay this vibrant I actually have a picture of it. I don't think I sent it to you, but I have a picture of this completely, and the photo before this completely healed. Uh, they look just like that. Um, they don't lighten very much, um, okay. providing, you know, if the artist knows what they're doing with color, the, the ink will stay. Um, okay. I get clients who stay, come in and they tell me, oh, you know, blue doesn't, you know, go in my skin well or green. And, yeah. You know, that's going to either be artist error that the ink didn't go in, didn't go in, or it's going to be quality of ink or pigment. Um, us at Needle Therapy, we use top line stuff. Our clients are worth the best. So that's what we try to use yeah. is the best. And, and as you say, this is something that will be with you. Forever. Forever. <laughs> and you want to, you know, it, you, you want it to be good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, something that, you know, when you're investing something that will always be there, you, you don't want to stand. That's right. <laughs> yes, yes. So this one is uh, interesting. Yeah, Jason <laughs> Voorhees. <laughs> uh, not something I think I would want to wake up <laughs> next to. We're actually, with this client, we're working on it. Um, not a complete horror sleeve. Uh, the, the tattoo right below this right here is actually a color portrait of Corey Taylor from Slipknot. Um, Okay. But he, he likes Corey Taylor. He's got a mask on. We're doing some mask things. We will be okay. adding Jason's machete to this and a Camp Crystal Lake sign to this as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. You know, what, what I think is fascinating to me, too, is that it really shows the personality of the person getting the tattoo. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, you have tattoos that are sweet and innocent yeah and then you have uh, Jason <laughs> yes yes <laughs> you know and, um, yeah the, it's art so you know we can we can do anything anything you want um, you know like this particular tattoo does not have any outlines your your basic tattoos you outline them you shade them you color right. them okay, this yeah. defies all of that so you know, <laughs> I, now that you mention it yeah you're you're absolutely right and that's pretty much what I do I, I add lines where I feel they're needed uh, I use them there's little uh, tricks that you can use with lines for example if you put a line around anything it brings it closer to the foreground closer to your eye um, 
like I just tattooed my wife. We did the entire tattoo with no outline. And then I'm looking at the tattoo and I'm like, ah, you know, we need a little bit here, we need a little bit there. So we went back in and we added that. Um, and it just, like I said, it just brings that, that piece to the foreground. We will probably be adding a line just around the perimeter of Jason's mask when we add the machete and the Camp Crystal Lake. Okay. Just because the, the, the mask is the, is the focal point, it's the main thing. Right, so right. we want attention, our eyes to be drawn there. Okay. <laughs> So uh, this really amazed me. Uh, we have a before and after. Yes. And the before tattoo, uh, quite honestly, is not extremely impressive. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, my son had a few tattoos done by amateurs. Yep. And, you know, they are not that vibrant. Uh, and the way you were able to work with that and bring it to this, yes, it's just amazing. <laughs> and the colors in in the after here are just absolutely. Uh, the blue is is absolutely striking. Thank you. Uh, blue is uh, a color I choose often for cover-ups. Um, one of the I, I'm, I'm a color artist and I also specialize in cover-ups okay. so um, <clears throat> a lot of people don't realize that you can actually cover a tattoo up with color they think you know I have to get black tribal or something like that and it's actually easier if you don't go that route to, to, to do the cover-up <laughs> um, like if this lady uh, had come to me and asked for black tribal we would have been locked into that that S shape you see right here with okay. little offshoots where the hands and legs are yeah um, she wanted uh, some some flowers, as you can tell. So mm -hmm. we just talked about color and, and what I recommended. And a lot of the times when people come to me for a cover-up, they do trust my um, artistic opinion, if you will. Um, so and because she did, you got she yeah. got that. <laughs> and this is uh, the arm, right? Yes, this yeah. is a forearm. Forearm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of a weird place. Um, the, the, the gecko or lizard was placed a little weird in my opinion. It wasn't <laughs> flat on the arm. It was a little off to the side yeah, toward yeah, the back. Yeah. Um, so as, as was our design, um, it does well, come around to the yeah. front a little more as well. Right. Well, you, well you, you almost had to because you needed to, to cover that. But yes. uh, you know, again, just really, really beautiful. And the colors are so vibrant. Thank you. Uh, another cover up. And it, it's a very similar design. Yes. But it's, a, it's a dragon head. They're both yeah, dragon heads. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is like my six-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And this is like an artist. <laughs> yes. That dragon over there, the, the cover-up dragon, the one with all the blue, is actually the dragon from the movie Dragonheart. Uh, okay. This is from the cover of the movie. Uh, this gentleman was looking for, when he originally got tattooed, he was looking for a dragon similar to what I did on him. I don't know who did the first tattoo, but he was not happy with it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and the worst part, in my opinion, uh, was he was nervous, a little nervous to come into the shop to talk to me about it. Um, I know his uh, fiance just became fiance. So uh, fiance came and initially talked to me and, and told me, showed me pictures of what he had and told me what he was looking to get. So um, I talked to her for like an hour and a half and I was able to come up with this and in my head I could get it to cover. So I needed him to come in so I could go over some other details with him so mm -hmm. we can make sure it covers. And it did, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do peop are people nervous when they come in for the first tattoo? You know, I think even people who come in uh, to, a, to any tattoo shop, and even if they've got a couple few tattoos, I think, I think they're nervous. Um, tattooing and tattoo artists have a stigma around them. Um, I think most people know the stigma around tattooing. <laughs> tattoo artists typically are like your bad boy type, what have you. I'm an artist, I just wanna draw on your skin. <laughs> you, know? Um, you know, what I do is, we're working with needles, so you know, it's, there's pain. Yeah. But um, I'm trying to do my job as painless as possible because mm -hmm. like a tattoo like this is like six hours. Um, I want you to sit for that whole six hours because if I have, you know, if you come back for another session, especially on something like, like this dragon, you know, I, I may lose my train of thought. I may, it may take me a little bit to go, okay, this is where I was going with this right. design. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's the same reason I don't book out months in advance. I know a lot of guys do that. Um, a couple weeks is good for me because if I can't do the tattoo within a couple weeks, I'm going to forget what I was
was what I was right. planning to okay, do. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. It, it's funny. I I have worked in the addiction treatment field for years, and I was doing an intake. And one of the questions we would ask people is, you know, have you used needles? And I had a guy who was just full of tattoos all down his arms and legs. And he looked at me and says, oh, no, I'm afraid of needles. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, he says, no, that's different. <laughs> it is different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to somebody who is old and has never had a tattoo, mm -hmm. it you know, to me, I, I have trouble seeing that difference, but I'm, I'm sure it must be. Yeah, I can explain the difference for you. Uh, two major differences right out the gate. Um a syringe looks like a needle. Uh, that's that's the first thing that gets most people. They see that needle coming at them and they're like, whoa, back off. Um, so that's the first thing. A tattoo machine, um, you don't really see the needle. You know, the needle goes like through our hand, if you will. So we're holding on to a grip that's hollow and the needle goes in and out and um, you'll see a little piece sticking out. That w and we're just grazing you. I mean, if you, they're yeah. doing their job properly, they should just be grazing you. Um, <laughs> the second difference is as a tattoo artist, we live in the second layer of skin. So we do not break through the third layer into the fatty tissues, or like a, a hypodermic needle would. Right. Okay. Um, so we're not quite as deep as, say, getting your blood drawn or something okay. to that effect. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and I, I appreciate your explaining that because, yeah. you know, uh, I am never afraid to admit when I'm ignorant on a subject. <laughs> no worries. And I'm always ready to learn. I think what gets most people is the noise of the machine. It kind of sounds like an electric engraver, or at least the coil machine does. Okay. Um, I use a couple different ones, a quiet one, a noisy one, if you will, a rotary and a, mm -hmm. and a coil. Uh, and, and a lot of the time it depends on what I'm doing, but it'll also depend upon what I'm using. Uh, depends upon what I'm doing and also who's getting the tattoo because I have clients that are like, no, no, don't use that noisemaker on me ever again, please. You know, yeah. Be because, you know, it's uh, not something you hear every day. So right. you can be nervous, nerve wracking. Sure. It, so. so here we have uh, Futurama. Yeah. Uh, and again, the, the colors. Are, are just so striking. Thank you. Uh, you know the purple and the hair, the red in the in the building, uh, the gray in the street. That red and purple won't jump without that gray and those yeah, blacks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, how long does a tattoo like this take? This particular tattoo um, I did at the Papillon Tattoo Convention in February, might have been April, something like that. It was, uh, it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event. Uh, this was my Saturday, this was all day. This was uh, noon okay. till approximately, I wanna say eight, uh, eight o'clock, possibly nine o'clock okay. uh, p.m. Um, I actually won best color for this tattoo. I, I can imagine <laughs> that the color, as I say, is just, to me, is so vibrant. Thank you. And, you know, this is a photograph, and I would imagine seeing it in person is yeah, I'm a horrible, horrible photographer. I am not a photographer by any <laughs> means. So, um, you know, if, if anybody thinks this looks good, you should definitely see it in person because it looks a whole lot better in person. And that's the same with every photo you're going to see. So um, I do the best I can. I have photographer friends I pick up little tips and suggestions yeah, from. But yeah, yeah. Well, and I mean, there's just limitations. <laughs> uh, Fans. Yeah. So here we have... Uh, Strikeout ALS. Yes. Uh, this is obviously, you know, and it says mom. So this yes. is obviously is something that's very important. Yes. To somebody. I actually, with this tattoo, um, the gentleman came in and he was looking to pretty much just get the Strikeout ALS ribbon. Um, it wasn't enough color for me, so we started talking. Um, so he was like, how about a family tree? I said, how about a single rose, you know, for the placement? It's, that's the forearm right there. Mm -hmm. um, a single rose, red rose means love. We were going to do it as a single red rose, but his mom's favorite color is peach. So okay. we went with the peaches. You know, <laughs> and, and, and that, that is a, a wonderful thing. And, you know, people, again, the, the stigma. Yes. People think of people who get tattoos as being rough. Yes. You know, kind of people. And, you know, this shows a, a real tenderness and a real caring. Yes. That uh, sort of belies that. That stereotype, yes. which is... I, and I do a lot of this style of, of work. I do a lot of, I call them memorial tattoos. Mm -hmm. um, the thing with this tattoo that, that got me personally, um, 
his mother, I tattooed his mother 15, 20 years ago, somewhere oh, in that wow. neighborhood. And she loved the tattoo so much that I did on her. He was uh, looking to go get a tattoo for his mom, who, who did have L ALS. Um, and he asked, Mom, you know, who, who should I go? And she says, you find the guy who did this tattoo on me. Uh, luckily for him, I have clients that he's friends with, so <laughs> okay. it didn't take him very long to locate me. So <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh, beautiful cardinal. Thank you. Uh, we we have cardinals who visit our, our yard every day. Me too. And <laughs> uh, it really captures not only the color, but I, I love the, the tilt of the head. Yes, the and attitude. The, the way the, the <laughs> eye is, is looking at you, like, okay, you know. Yes, uh, yes. Um, this tattoo is actually on my wife. She absolutely loves cardinals. Okay. Um, this cardinal was a photograph that she passed to me, and she loved the, the cardinal strictly because of how his head is cocked and the yeah. attitude behind him. Um, and she was like, I just need some sort of tree. So I was like, cherry blossoms are awesome. So I, I decided cherry blossoms are what we needed. Yeah, and, <laughs> and the, the, the pink of, of the, the flower yes. is, is a real nice blend. It, it doesn't, you know, it, it works well. It doesn't... Yes. Clashed if I didn't that. have that blue back there, the pinks would have clashed with the reds a little bit more. Right. So, so the blue helps um, okay. accent the pinks and the reds, so, which is pretty yeah. cool. You know, obviously, as you say, you're, you're a color person. Yes, so. absolutely. Yeah. Back to the future. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, and the, the lightning, which I can't tell, is that the, the skin color? There's a little bit of white in there. Okay. Um, I didn't want to go. Two. I didn't want to go too <coughs> like blue or add so much yellow. I didn't want it to be the focal point. The car is definitely the focal point. Right. Um, and the car is just about to jump in time. So um, the the gentleman I did this on. The, the biggest Back to the Future fan I've ever met. Owns a hoverboard. I mean, he's paid hundreds of dollars to meet the, the original actors. I'm just, and a very, very, very nice guy. Uh, this took me a long time to do. This guy has a, a huge uh, upper arm that's on his uh, bicep up here. Okay. Um, but I want to say that took me about 20 hours, what you're looking at right okay. now. So. <laughs> so you are at Needle Therapy Tattoo and Body Piercing. Correct. Which is right here on Main Street in Ware. And, uh, you know, if you are looking for a tattoo and you're local, this is definitely the place to go. Phil, thank you for coming thank in. Thank you very much. It's been a, a pleasure. And I want to thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you again next time on Creative Connections. From the inner sense of time Comes the ancient poet's rhyme Bringing us the master key To open up the mystery From the depth of time and space We arrive in quiet grace Finding what is meant to be As we explore the mystery Pouring forth from days gone by We can hear the poet sigh From the depth of ecstasy Moving into mystery